Hey, what's up guys, Mark here. Today we'll be talking about the MSI GS65. It's a thin and light 15 inch gaming laptop and I don't think it needs much of an introduction. It's a fairly popular laptop, so I guess I'll just hop right in starting with the build of this thing. The build isn't particularly amazing. It's constructed mostly out of aluminum with plastic pieces here and there, like the hinge for example. The keyboard deck has been reinforced, so flex is pretty minimal, but there's these like creaking noises when you press down on the grill up top. The hinge is tuned quite well. It's a one hand open without feeling loose or weak, but the screen isn't very stiff, so it twists and it bends fairly easily. Overall, it's good for a gaming laptop. There are ones that are much worse, but definitely not as tanky as say the Razer Blade 15, and given the price, it's a little bit underwhelming. The design is pretty clean too, like it's all black with some gold accents, I like it. Okay, one of the things that I personally disliked about the GS75, which is the 17 inch version of this laptop, was the keyboard, particularly the position of the Windows key and the backlighting. Like when you shine the LEDs through the sides of the keycaps, it just looks really messy and makes it difficult to find a certain key, so I'm glad they kept it simple this time around. It's a steel series keyboard with individually lit RGB backlighting. It's got a good layout. The key travel is quite short, so it's not really something I enjoy typing on, but I wouldn't say it's terrible. It really just needs more key travel because the rest of the keyboard is quite good. The trackpad is really good though, I think they did an excellent job here. It uses a glass surface, it's smooth, the clicks feel great, and it's a Windows Precision trackpad so it's about as good as it gets for a Windows laptop. The speakers are pretty much the same as the GS75, so really bad sound quality. They're on the bottom, they're tinny, the bass response just isn't there, they're not really detailed, it's just bad. If you're listening to any sort of audio at all, you're gonna want headphones with this thing. They're using a 1080p 144Hz screen with 7 milliseconds of response time, it's bright, you got thin bezels, viewing angles are good, but the color accuracy and the color gamut are quite poor out of the box. If you're doing color sensitive work, you'll want to either calibrate it or just look elsewhere entirely. The webcam is positioned at the top, it's a 720p webcam but it doesn't support Windows Hello login unfortunately. The only thing is that I think it'd be cool to have a 4K option like the Razer Blade for content creators, but this one's really good for gaming. On the left is an Ethernet port, two USBs, a separate headphone and microphone jack, and on the right is the power plug, HDMI 2.0, a mini display port, Thunderbolt 3, and a third USB port. Uh, really good ports on this thing actually, with the only notable missing port being an SD slot. Now if you look on MSI's spec sheet for the GS65, you'll notice it says hi-fi in brackets after the headphone jack. There's actually nothing special about it as far as volume or detail through my Sennheiser HD6XXs. It sounds like every single other laptop that I've reviewed. The bottom panel is a pain to remove and I'm pretty sure this white sticker will void your warranty if you poke through it to unscrew the screw beneath. Could be wrong, so don't quote me there, but if you do get it off, there are two M.2 slots and two RAM slots, one of which is populated so it's only running in single channel out of the box, which is not a good thing because it drops your frame rates in games by as much as 30%, which is what I personally measured. And given that the RAM and SSDs are on the back side of the motherboard, like, no, right? If you're gonna make it this hard to upgrade, MSI should have just installed dual channel memory right out of the box. So this model is rocking the i7-8750H, it's got 16 gigs of RAM, a 256 gig SSD, and an RTX 2060. The RAM is single channel, like I said, and the SSD they're using here is the Samsung PM961, so a bit slower than the PM981, but still a fast drive even at 256 gigs. Performance in games is excellent. It handles everything at 1080p, which isn't really a surprise given that the 2060 is around 15 to 20% faster than the 1070 Max-Q. As far as which GPU to get, for gaming, I'd recommend the 2060 just because literally every single game runs at 60 FPS or higher, and if you lower the settings a bit, even the latest AAA games will hit 144 FPS. There's actually three fans in here that intake air from the top and bottom of the laptop, so I didn't see any thermal throttling, but this is the base model, so I'd expect it to run cool if they're gonna shove a 2080 in here as well. If you open the Dragon Center software, you get access to some performance and fan profiles for more control over the thermals and fan noise. With light use, like web browsing, the fans were pretty much silent, and under a heavy load, like gaming, the fans were reasonably loud, so you'll hear them, but they don't scream like jet engines. 
And lastly, surface temps are also really good. It was only really warm at most with a peak of around 50 degrees Celsius, but overall thermals and fan noise with the RTX 2060 are really good. There's an 82 watt hour battery inside that lasts about 6 hours with light use, and the 2060 model comes with a smaller 180 watt charger that ends in a barrel plug. Okay, so the GS65 starts at $2100, US definitely not cheap, but is it worth it? My biggest complaints with this thing are the build quality, it's pretty underwhelming given the price, the speakers are oh so terrible, the keyboard I'm personally fine with but you might not like the rather low key travel, and lastly, the lack of upgradability. But the overall experience of using this device is actually quite good for me personally. You plug in a pair of headphones and I'll spend half the day playing games. But there are some issues that you should be aware of if you're planning to purchase this laptop. But if you're cool with what I just mentioned, then yeah, it's a good laptop. So that's the end of this review. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Also consider subscribing for more videos. I'll see you guys next time.